Today I'm at the London headquarters of Mobile Roadie and I'm happy to introduce to the show Stephen O'Reilly, uh, the sales and marketing manager for the UK and Ireland for Mobile Roadie. So hi Stephen and thanks for taking the time to come onto the show. Thanks for having me. So first of all, let's start with a quick overview of Mobile Roadie before we launch into more in-depth questions. So uh, what is Mobile Roadie? Uh, when and where did it start out? Um, well, Mobile Roadie, we are a platform for anyone to create and manage their own iPhone and Android apps, and pretty soon, uh, BlackBerry, Nokia, and iPad. So you can build your app once and go to multiple platforms. Um, we, we, it's up to you. Um, we were established in almost two years ago now. We're based in Los Angeles. We have regional offices around the world in LA, obviously, Barcelona, London, and Tokyo. Um, and we have people on the ground in other European and international destinations. Uh, so today, uh, you know, Mobile Road uses the, you know, the opportunity that we have with so many different applications that are on the web, social applications, uh, music applications, video applications, and now you have the opportunity to take them all and uh, condense them into a single app, which is uh, what you guys do. Uh, so um, you use APIs to bring everything together. And uh, what is your customer's feedback in realizing the potential of bringing their whole social media presence onto one app and uh, to get all these different digital properties into one single place, uh, which is something that people didn't think was possible beforehand? Well, at Mobile Roadie, we've made it incredibly simple for our users to uh, build really brilliant apps in general. Uh, so we give our users a dashboard. It's a web-based content management system. Um, and they can choose to add whatever digital content that they've already got online. So basically you're pulling in what already exists and pulling it into a, a beautiful app experience. Um, within a couple of hours you could have a really great app. Um, our apps, like they automatically update themselves when you update your Twitter account, your news feeds. Um, you can sell music through iTunes, on the iPhone, on, on, through any digital store on Android. Yeah, so we've made it really, really simple for people to build, to build these apps. Um, some people think it's quite difficult, but um, you'd be surprised. Uh, so in terms of um, the services you support, uh, there are both mainstream ones like you know, Facebook and Twitter, and also more music-specific ones like SoundCloud, Artist Data, and Topspin. Uh, so do you have a one-to-one -one relationship with these services um, so that you could tailor make uh, your integration of their service into the app? Or do you simply use their API to pull the data in? Um, in some cases, we do it by the API, but um, it's, that's not always necessary. So, for example, if you're a record label or a band and um, you ha you're, you're, you're going on tour, if you want to just pull in your touring information from Songkick, basically you just put in your Songkick uh, or your band name and Songkick will pull all of that information into a, into a mobile roadie app. Um, so your users will get the, a map on their phone, purchase tickets to go to a show, all the information about the venue. Um, people can upload photos from the show, uh, RSVP, um, and you can also uh, see who else is going to the show. Yeah. That's, just on a, that's, that's just a Songkick example. We've integrated with Topspin, so if you have a Topspin account, it's really easy to pull in a top spin store into a into an application sell again music tickets merchandise um, a great example of one of our top spin integrations Lincoln Parks app so they're selling all sorts of physical goods inside their app really really great experience and that's using top spins technology in a mobile roadie app so the mobile uh, app space has exploded in the past two years and uh, tens of thousands of apps so it's really hard to actually uh, get an app to come through to you know for people to notice an app coming out because unless you get featured for example on the iTunes store you know nowadays uh, people just have to promote their own app what is the best way you've seen people doing that and how do artists get people to go and download an app which is quite you know a uh, a separate things from going and downloading music. It's, you know, people to think about apps not primarily for music, but, you know, for games and other stuff. It's my opinion that apps should, should be at the center of your communication strategy with your fans. You know, if you have a website, um, you, what, you should have an app. You know, if you've got a fan base out there and you can build a really great app um, and put, a, put, put your brand in the user's hand on their devices, it's just such a good user experience. Um, that's immediately accessible to, you know, to anyone, any of your fans. Uh, so 
Let's talk about fragmentation in terms of uh, operating systems. You mentioned that you guys are possibly going to go into you know, Nokia and uh, BlackBerry devices as well. Um, how hard is it to develop for all these different platforms? And uh, do you think that this fragmentation is a positive thing or it's just kind of a, the way the industry has gone and it's just something you have to deal with? Well, it's obviously something that we have to deal with. Um, obviously, iPhone is it's very much an, 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 an iPhone world in, in apps at the moment, but Android is growing market share rapidly, and, and I think that's great because if the guys over in Google and, and the Android OS are making their technology better all the time, it means just Apple will want to keep a step ahead of, ahead of them. And now Nokia, they want a piece of the pie again, they, you know, they know that music is one way back into, you know, to, for their <laughs> users to fall in love with Nokia all over again. And we welcome competition, and that's why we've embraced all of these platforms um, and made it really easy for our clients to build their app once and go to, go to four or five platforms. And uh, do you see artists actually choosing to uh, go on Android? And if so, is it always kind of like the second thing that they add onto the iPhone uh, main application? Or do you actually see people uh, consciously deciding to just develop for Android and not for the iPhone OS? In our experience so far, um, most of our, our clients here um, are developing for, well, they're going on one operating system, which is iPhone at the moment or any iOS device. Um, but also, we're seeing Android grow all the time, uh, and we see the numbers on our back end here of the number of Android devices growing all the time, and it's, it's, not, it's, it's probably never going to slow down. So in terms of uh, the way that people can buy stuff on the Android store, do you think that uh, Google has to work on the way in which their store works in order for people to actually become more enamored with apps on the Android operating system? And do you think that they're going to work on that side of things to make it easier for people to access apps? Well, I think they, they're going to have to make, make it easier for users to, to, to be able to purchase music on an Android device. In our experience, m- so much of the transactions, maybe 90 plus percent, are via iTunes. And the reason is it's just so easy to spend money in the iTunes store. You're just one click away from purchasing a track. You're already signed in with your iTunes account, just putting your, your password. And, you know, you've got that song on your, on your phone. It's, it's really simple. It's a great user experience, and if you put barriers in the way of your users, you know, if, if maybe five or six clicks, you know, to be able to purchase a track, you're just putting those hurdles up, and it's just a nightmare. So it's very much, when it comes to transactions and d- digital music sales, it's an iPhone world at the moment. Yeah. And uh, you, you work both with, uh, you know, big major labels and with independent artists. So is there a difference in the, in the use cases for... Uh, mobile road in, in for the two users. So um, do you think that the setup of an app should change at all uh, between an artist that only has about five, 600 you know, people downloading it and an artist that has maybe 10,000, 20,000 downloading it? Um, but we have top tier artists like Madonna uh, and Taylor Swift on, on the same platform as like uh, some up and coming bands in the UK that might have maybe... 1,000 installs versus hundreds of thousands for a major artist like Madonna, um, or Take That, for example. But we, we, we give all of our users the same tools. Uh, we don't discriminate. You know, we just have a great platform, and it's up to you to plug in whatever technology you want from our platform and present it in a great app. So it's the same. You know? Yeah, because that's something that you know, a lot of people might struggle to you know, believe the fact that the technology that you make available to major artists is the same that you know anybody can get by getting the app. Yeah, exactly. So we we've really lowered the barriers to entry into the app space. Like not so long ago, you're talking you can develop a mobile roadie app for hundreds of pounds instead of maybe tens of thousands of pounds a couple of years ago. So I would urge anyone that that's even thinking about developing a mobile app just to check mobile roadie out and, and other platforms. Obviously, I'm going to say we are the best because I know that we are. Um, and anyone in the music industry that's worked with Mobile Roadie will tell you that they love our platform. Um, it's incredibly successful in a short period of time. Um, and we've got some great statistics and case studies. And we've got, we can back up everything that we do here at Mobile Roadie. Yeah. We know it works. Monetizing the app with Mobile Roadie, how does that work? Is uh, the only way to actually monetize 
by making the app uh, cost something, for example, on the um, uh, iPhone or on the iPad, charging a, a pound or two pounds for the app? Or is there any way that you can implement in-app purchase uh, within the mobile road environment at the moment? Um, well, some of the, obviously the easiest way to make money inside your iPhone app or your, your app is selling music. So if you, if you make it really easy for people to preview a 30-second sample, they're just one, one click away from hit and buy in, inside the app. So obviously music. You can promote tickets to shows. Uh, you can have your merch store functioning very well inside a mobile app. Um, so th- like there, there are three simple ways, music, tickets, and merch. We also have a standard built into our platform, push notifications. So you can target all of your fans um, either globally or down to within like couple of kilometers of a certain postcode in london so if you have like tickets available for a show in the roundhouse tonight and um, hasn't sold out you know you might know that you have 500 fans within f- five kilometers and you know you could let them know come along to the show tonight f- show the app at the door there could be a discount for you so these are all simple ways and um, it's really really easy once you once you've got a fan base people interested in in in, in your music and um, and they will react yeah. And uh, you have a point system as well, which is you have developed at uh, Mobile Roadie so that the fans can actually sort of rank themselves. Um, how does that work and, and uh, what has the take up been with that? Yeah, so we introduced a fan wall um, maybe three months ago. Um, one of the benefits of Mobile Roadie is that we're, we're a technology company at heart. We've got a great team of developers and designers in Los Angeles and we've people all around the world and we get feedback all the time from the record labels, artists themselves. Um, just stuff that's happening online in general that we think, wow, that's a great idea. Let's plug it into a mobile roadie app experience. And so we can add all these tools just to make it really easy um, to, to be aware of what's, what's happening out there at the moment. So let's talk about a case study. Um, is there a particular artist or a particular app that you'd like to talk about in terms of you know, how well it's done and in terms of the numbers that you have produced? Yeah, so we, re- we launched an app um, in, what, when was it? In November for Take That and in the UK it was exclusively available for the first week in the UK and Ireland and maybe one other uh, European territory Um, and the statistics on that are off the charts. We haven't released them yet but when they do people will be blown away by the number of downloads of that application and all of the data that Take That have managed to pull in from that application in, in one week. So I'm looking forward to looking at those figures in one month's time and you know being able to showcase that to all of our you know people that might have doubted the power of the mobile roadie platform or apps in general so we're going to have some really great stats um pretty soon so hopefully we'll be able to let you guys know but internationally we have um one of our top artists in the states taylor swift um i think she she's had close to six hundred thousand downloads of her app on her phone so she's got a a huge crazy fan base of 600,000 people that she can just you know call on you know and connect with on a mobile device it's it's fantastic in a week when people downloaded the app 37,000 people gave their email addresses in one week that, that's so valuable that's on a thousand pounds app um, I think she sold forty thousand dollars worth of music in a week and that's music that was available in iTunes for over a year so that just proves that if you make it easy for people to get their hands on your music they will do it taylor swift is is obviously a huge act but these are uh, rock solid stats yeah. so you get all those type of statistics um also fifteen thousand people click to buy tickets inside that app to go to a show um wow. that's just a, you know that's in a week so that, that works and, and what about um um, you talk about push notification and it's kind of a new thing and you don't know whether people are going to be funny about it or you know what what's the people's reaction is going to be to that uh, particular delivery platform uh, so what's your experience been in terms of people actually accepting push notifications from applications that you release the vast majority of our of our users um, opt in to receive push notifications and um, probably the main reason is because you know they're, they're fans of that band and if you can get a push notification from like if you're a Take That fan or, you know, Young Guns, an up-and-coming band here in the UK with a, with a great fan base, you know, if you can get a push notification from those guys on a Friday saying, hey, guys, you know, we, we're, we're just back from touring in, in Ireland. We, we played the Olympia in Dublin last night. Here's a couple of photos inside the app. You know, if you can get that push on your phone, it's a great 
you know, it's a feel good factor. And generally, people, like the vast, vast majority of mobile roadie app users, opt in to receive push notifications. Yeah. And they're free for our clients. So, you know, it's a, it's a tr- tremendously powerful tool. There's no SMS costs. It's push. It pops up right on the user's phone, and um, you click on view, and it'll take you straight into the into the application. Push is powerful. Yeah. Um, in terms of price tiers, uh, you have uh, three different uh, you know products that you uh, you have on the site. Uh, so, could you briefly talk us through uh, what they are and what the differences are between them? Yeah. So, our pricing with Mobile Roadie uh, starts at three hundred and ninety nine pounds. Um, that's a setup fee. Um, it's three nine nine and twenty five a month. And that will give you a thousand installs of your app, or else just just to simplify that, if you have a core, so that's core. If you have a core application, uh, you can have a uh, one year for nine hundred and ninety nine pounds. That's core. Um, we also have a top tier platform uh, which is Pro, and that's four thousand um, pounds for unlimited installs for a year. Uh, but for that, you get unlimited technology updates throughout the year. So. We're always adding new new features to our applications. We have a new release coming out at the end of November. Um, I'm going to show you some <laughs> exclusive previews of what we have coming, but it's it's amazing. Uh, so we're adding these tools all the time, and and we just make we just make it happen. You don't have to worry about going back to a designer or a developer and asking for that functionality. Mobile Roadie just add those tools. And uh, looking at uh, finally looking at you know. Uh, next month and into 2011 uh, what are you guys uh, working on and what are you uh, concentrating on in terms of development um, well we're, we're working hard on adding the new platforms obviously um, in our next release we're going to be adding uh, some kind of cool features like QR codes so if you're at a show in the O2 or any show really uh, and you, 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 the band have like a program with a QR code. You just open the app of 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 that of that band on your phone, and you can unlock content that the band have hidden inside their CMS. So you could unlock tracks or uh, exclusive photos or a link to a video or exclusive content. That's QR codes. Um, we're looking at adding augmented reality into into our app. So we're partnering with Lair uh, in, in 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 a future release. Um, we're, you're going to be able to check into a show pretty soon and you'll be able to see which other fans are there. Uh, some pretty cool things coming down the pipe. Cool. Well, it was great talking to you and uh, thanks for joining us and look forward to seeing what, what you're going to be releasing next. Uh, thanks, yeah. So, a uh, big fan of the show and um, if anyone wants to get in touch, it's mobileroadie.com. Uh, happy to hear from you. Answer any questions. Give us a shout. Thank you.